This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. A bowl of ramen is basically a ticking time bomb. Once that thing hits your table, you've got 10 minutes tops before that bowl of ramen is ruined. Done, gone, game over. Noodles only take about a minute to cook. And you've got that bowl with boiling hot broth. Those noodles, they're still cooking and their texture is deteriorating, is, is, is getting damaged by the second. The whole situation is a f***ing paradox. How am I supposed to eat? About a pint of boiling hot mixture of broth and noodles in under 10 minutes without burning myself really, really bad. Hey guys, salut, this is Alex, welcome back to the Ramen Series Season 2 where I'm trying really hard to up my knowledge, my technique, my understanding of ramen to get me to a ramen shop level. That's the goal, okay? So in the previous episode, I went to Ivan Ramen in New York City where I had the chance to taste the Shio Ramen of a lifetime. I mean, just a spectacular bowl. That's beautiful. <gasps> Now guys, I've got a confession to make. Reviewing the footage from my trip to see Ivan, I realized something. I've been eating ramen totally wrong. I mean, I did the whole first ramen season and I was convinced that I was eating it correctly. But just watch me eating ramen alongside Ivan. All right, that's enough. I think you'll agree that we are not doing the same thing. You know, you're kind of leaning over the bowl and you're chewing and spitting and it's all dropping back into the bowl and it's gross. You see, what Ivan has mastered that I haven't is the true technique to slurping. Why don't you just learn how to eat it properly? Properly. Properly. I know, right? Considering slurping as a technique hurts a bit. At first, I thought slurping was a gimmick. I thought it was just kept for Japanese movies. For rude people, loud, disgusting. But I've done my research and I found so many useful tips. So many pros for slurping. This is not just for fun, okay? There is some seriousness in slurping. In the end, more than a technique, slurping might actually be an art. So, if we're going to learn to slurp, we're gonna need a lot of ramen, like a lot. So right now, I'm heading to Kodawari Ramen, you know, for my episode 2. Exactly. Impeccable, je prends. Et voilà. Merci beaucoup, c'est classe. Bon bah, bon boulot. Super, bon merci. <laughs> right, so the guys at Kodawari provided me with some aroma oil, some tare, some broth, and then some noodles as well. Yes, I could have done all this. But the purpose of this episode is more to focus on slurping. At least we've got the materials to work with now. The pro number one for slurping is that it allows you to eat boiling hot ramen without burning yourself. Right, and now a few words from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Better, H-E-L-P. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service. It is 100% online and you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live session when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With better help, you can get the same professionalism and quality you expect from an in-office therapy. But with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, 
with more scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Alex. It is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, also linked in the description below. Thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. The pro number one for slurping is that it allows you to eat boiling hot ramen without burning yourself. In the past, I thought that you were supposed to have your mouth really sealed around the noodles. A bit like the cats in the Disney movie when they, they suck out spaghetti. Slurping is a different game, okay? When you slurp, instead of using a vacuum created by your cheeks, like this, try to inhale the noodles by keeping my mouth slightly open and then using the force of my lungs, not just the vacuum created by my mouth. So when you're slurping, you're basically sucking a lot of air inside your mouth. That air is also cooling down the whole thing. It's pretty technical, but I can assure you this works. So, spoiler, you can still burn yourself pretty badly, especially if you try to eat too much in one. So you take less than what you think you need. Pull them free from the mass of noodles. You dip them one more time in the broth. Then you bow to the bowl. You're way more likely to get some broth if your mouth is closer to the bowl. So besides the cooling effect, slurping ramen also has a tremendous impact on something pretty cool. Flavor perception. So basically, this is me. Oh, hold on a second. So this is me eating a bowl of ramen. And this is something called the epithelium, the zone that is responsible for perceiving flavor. The tongue, mostly responsible for taste, acid, uh, you know, salty, sweet, bitter, umami as well. But when it comes to flavor, that is the epithelium. This is a noodle, and these are droplets of broth scattered a bit everywhere. As you are slurping that noodle, air picks up flavor compound, and then it conveys them up my nose into the epithelium. This is the nasal olfaction. But it can also go in another way, and that's where slurping is crazy. As the noodle enters your mouth, and as you're inhaling air, you're also vaporizing tons of flavor compound up to that epithelium, just from the back door, basically. And that is called the retro-nasal olfaction. Super powerful. This is something that, you know, fancy sommelier do in restaurants. Sniff the wine, nasal olfaction, and then they slurp the wine. I'm trying to stimulate that epithelium inside, inside my mouth. Could be working if that were not to be water, but... Just to show, okay? Right, guys, I want to conduct a little experiment. I want to eat two bowls of ramen. The first one, I want to eat it the way I used to eat ramen in the past. Chewing and slowly getting the things in. Struggling, basically. The second bowl of ramen, I want to go full on slurping. I just want to see if there's a genuine difference in terms of speed between the two. And I swear I'm not doing this to eat more and more bowls of ramen. <laughs> Noodles are amazing. Three minutes, fifty nine seconds. Four minutes, fifty four seconds. All right, so what does this little experiment tell us? Well, slurping is about twenty twenty five percent faster than the regular method where I was trying to use my lips. But I was struck way more by the fact that when I'm not slurping, I'm completely missing out on the broth. I'm picking a bunch of noodles and then I have to blow on them because otherwise I just burn my lips. And so probably the broth has so much time to go down the noodles and back in the bowl. When you're slurping, I'm just sucking broth. It's crazy. I mean, I know what you're thinking. Probably like many of you, I found slurping, at least in the West, to be rude.
Okay, so slurping helps to cool everything down. It makes the whole bowl taste better and it's a lot faster. But it's still really messy, right? Well, I want to have another bowl. Surprise, surprise. But also, I want to do a little experiment. The impact of slurping on my shirt. On my paper shirt. Okay. So let's slurp. Wow, I feel like I'm on a crime scene. One, two, three, four, five, six. About a dozen stains of broth, pretty scattered all around. Now let's do another pass. But this time, I will make good use of the chopsticks. You'll see what I mean in a second. Mm. So on this ramen target, I only have two or three stains instead of the dozen that I had earlier on. And they are in that zone. Why? Very simple. So instead of slurping freely and having the noodles swirl and slap and so scattered oil everywhere, this time, as you're slurping, you also create some sort of a channel between your mouth and that space in between the chopstick. As I'm slurping, they go up in a straight line so they don't splash. But underneath, yes, they slap a bit and that's why I've got a few stains. I'm not sure this is science, but borderline. So I feel like now we all understand why slurping matters. It cools down the noodle and the broth mixture. It makes everything taste better. It's faster so you can eat the bowl at the temperature it's supposed to be eaten. It might actually be less gross. And yes, it is messy, but we got damage control with the chopsticks. Now, in all honesty, there still is one aspect of things that we completely ignored. It's obviously the noodles themselves. They are like hundreds of different types of noodles. They can be thin, thick, wide, curly, straight, and so many different options for the broth to stick or not. So I've been willing to investigate noodles for so long, but I've also been dreaming about visiting a ramen noodle factory. Luckily for us, I very recently got a green light to visit one of the best noodle makers on the planet. That's where we're going next time. Peace, bye bye, salut.